It wasn't always this way. And by it, I mean the business community and immigration. They weren't always so afraid of supporting it. Business people like Mark Zuckerberg used to be proudly pro-immigration, and they put their money behind it. Now, he's saying he's done with politics. In fact, business leaders used to get extremely involved on Capitol Hill, fighting for immigration reform. In 1996, Republican presidential candidate Pat Buchanan was running on an anti-immigrant, America First platform, just like Donald Trump is now. It helped inspire the most anti-immigrant legislation in Congress in nearly a century, which looked likely to pass. But then the business community, which relies heavily on immigrants for its workforce, stepped in. Lobbyists for early Silicon Valley and Seattle tech companies like Intel, Microsoft, and Hewlett-Packard swarmed the nation's capital. Working alongside many other business groups representing the construction, agriculture, hotel, and restaurant industries, they spent a ton of time and money attacking the anti-immigration bill, finding common ground with Hispanic organizations and the ACLU. Eventually, their coalition defeated the proposed bill, forcing Republicans to pursue a scaled-back measure. And after a few early primary victories, Buchanan had to drop his bid for the presidency. To further underscore how commonplace this was, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas's wife, Ginny Thomas, who is now famously an America First election denier, also used to be pro-immigration, back when she was the immigration lobbyist for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and her name was Virginia Lamp. She once spoke on a panel of immigration experts and said that the business community should challenge the public's faulty assumption that immigration negatively affects the economy, and that the view that the border is out of control is based on a type of selfish nationalism. So what happened? According to ProPublica interviews with more than 20 leading business lobbyists, the U.S. business community has backed down because they've calculated that they can still get corporate tax cuts and slash labor and environmental regulations from Trump's anti-immigrant version of the Republican Party. One former long-term Chamber of Commerce lobbyist said, business leaders are more willing to spend money to advocate for cutting taxes, including on inherited wealth and to get involved in policy debates over workplace safety regulations or workers unionizing, then they are to put their resources into immigration reform like they used to. But businesses' need for immigrant workers is arguably greater than ever. The U.S.-born working population is in significant decline, and at least 8.2 million jobs nationally are sitting unfilled right now. That's untapped capacity that companies could unleash with immigrant workers who are younger on average. Without immigrants, Small businesses around the country that rely on in-person work would struggle severely. Homes would go unbuilt, causing housing prices to soar. Nursing homes and the home health care industry, already dangerously understaffed, would face a crisis-level labor shortage. And big tech would lose some of its best and brightest. But still, advocating for immigrants, who are such a big part of their workforce, is no longer something the business lobby is openly doing in the Trump era. While this problem has certainly ballooned under Trump, it started long beforehand. Head to the link in our bio to find out more.